When it comes to terrifying creatures, there's not much worse than a lizard the size of an apartment building racing across the earth devouring everything in its path. I'm talking about dinosaurs, of course. But they've been dead and gone for 65 million years, so we can breathe easy. Or can we? From the cat that takes no prisoners to the shark that looks like a buzzsaw, here's 20 animals that were scarier than dinosaurs. <sighs> Number 20. Canada Lynx Most people who live in Alaska have seen a lot of different kinds of animals, from a moose to a brown bear to a fox, but the Canada Lynx isn't like any other animal. This beautiful cat, whose ears are tufted and whose feet look like mittens are rarely seen. Until not long ago, that is. Anchorage is Alaska's most populated city, and cats are showing up there more often than they used to. And they might not have lived at the same time, but I'll bet even dinosaurs were afraid of these guys. Suddenly, lynx are everywhere in Anchorage. The number of snowshoe hares, which lynx like to eat, is at its highest right about now, which means they're probably going to be more lynx sightings. Hares have a natural population cycle that can last between 8 and 11 years. Me, don't bite me! Hey, ow, 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 ow! When there are a lot of hares, like there are now, there's a lot of lynx too. But these wildcats don't just live in Anchorage. You can find them all over Alaska, northern Canada, and even in some of the lower 48 states. Scientists didn't realize how far a lynx could migrate until recently. But in the last five years, scientists in the Northwest Boreal Lynx Project have seen proof that cats go on epic journeys that are longer and harder than anyone thought possible. One of the project's star travelers, who was called Hobo, left his home range in June of 2017 and traveled 2,174 miles by June of 2018. He'd been through mountains and often powerful rivers, but it's still not clear why the cats go on such long trips. They're amazing voyagers and hella fluffy and cute. Just don't try to pet one if you like your eyes where they're supposed to be. This kitty got claws. Big claws. Before we go on, like this video, smash that subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 19. Helicoprion. When we go swimming in coastal waters, we thankfully no longer have to worry about the helicoprion, a huge predator that went extinct about 250 million years ago. Since we found a lot of its fossils, we've been able to put together a clear picture of it. And after it was found in Idaho, it was said that the huge fish was about 40 feet long. So this sea creature is twice as big as a great white shark. Whoa. The nickname Buzzsaw Shark comes from the shape of the helicoprion's jaw and teeth. From the few bones and teeth that were found, people tried to figure out why the whorl of teeth looked like a buzzsaw. The whorl was moved to different parts of a fish's body before it was finally accepted in 2013 as a growth from the lower jaw that made this species a better predator. They also found out that the helicoprion wasn't a shark, but a type of ratfish, even though sharks and ratfish are related. Ratfish or not, when it was at its best, it was the most successful ocean predator and one of the strangest looking fish around. Number 18. Titanoboa. A recent study has claimed that the world's biggest snake, which was as long as a school bus and as heavy as a small car, ruled tropical ecosystems just 6 million years after the feared Tyrannosaurus rex died out. A team of scientists from all over the world found some of the bones of the giant boa-like Titanoboa snake in Colombia. These bones are now on display at the Florida Museum of National History. Jonathan Block, a vertebrate paleontologist at the Florida Museum, says that the snake was between 42 and 45 feet long based on the size of the vertebrae that's been found. That would make the snake as long as Sue, the famous T-Rex on display at Chicago's Field Museum. In the movie Anaconda, a snake tried to eat Jennifer Lopez, but it wasn't even as big as the one that they found in real life. It's that crazy, this snake outsized even Hollywood's disaster movie imagination. As part of a Smithsonian promotion, a full-size model of Titanoboa was put on display in New York City's Grand Central Terminal, and I'm sure it scared a few people on the night trains. Number 17. The Pentacopterus decaherensis. The huge sea scorpion Pentacopterus, which was just found, was named after a Pentaconter, one of the first Greek galley ships, all because of how it moved. A group of researchers from Yale University say that Pentacopterus lived 467 million years ago. It had a long head shield, a narrow body, and big grasping arms that it used to catch food. 
They could grow to be almost six feet long. It's the oldest Europterid that's ever been described. Europterids are aquatic anthropods like spiders, lobsters, and ticks. Geologists found the fossil bed near the upper Iowa River in northeastern Iowa, sunk in a meteorite crater. After that, by damming the river for a short time in 2010, the fossils were found and collected. Researchers found both adult and young Pentacopterus fossils in this site, with a ton of other amazing new fossils, and this gave them a lot of information about how the animal grew. The experts also said that the specimens were in very good shape. The fossil lay in layers of sediment where the sea filled a crater made by a meteorite impact that's about 5 kilometers across. The low oxygen still waters at the bottom of the meteorite crater were able to keep the fossils in this this amazing condition, and now we have the opportunity to learn so much more about how utterly terrifying things were in the past. Number 16. Hallucigenia Fortis Hallucigenius is, or rather was, one of the strangest animals ever. It was an invertebrate, so it didn't have a backbone, kind of like an anthropod or a worm. However, it did have strong, sharp spikes sticking out of its back, which probably scared off potential predators. It also had claws that looked like tentacles and helped it move along the ocean floor. The strangest thing, though, is that the fossil of this tiny sea creature, which lived over 500 million years ago, showed it had no head and all of the fossils told the same story. It seems like an animal without a head would have trouble doing normal animal things like breathing and eating. But now new fossils found in Canada showed that the missing part was there all along. This shows us for the first time what Hallucigenia's face looked like, and it looked pretty weird. Scientists carefully chipped away at the rock until they found a head in the shape of a spoon with some strange features. They were thrilled to see not only a pair of small eyes looking back at them, but also a cheeky half-moon smile under them. It looks like the fossil was smiling at us because it's been keeping its secrets about its appearance. Inside the creature's mouth, the researchers found a ring of teeth and another set of teeth that ran from its throat to its stomach. Which is scary, but I guess not as scary as just straight up not having a head. Number 15. The Dunkleostis Here it is, the Dunkleostis, the most famous arthrodire placiderm fish of all time. This is a huge, strange looking fish that looks like a shark and a snake had a baby. They lived during the late Devonian period, between 358 and 382 million years ago, and grew to be about 30 feet long and 4.5 tons. They could open and close those terrifying and huge jaws as fast as modern suction feeders and with more than 1,600 pounds of pressure, which is a lot of force. North Americans, Poles, Belgians, and Moroccans should be worried next time they go chill at a local waterhole since this terrible fish has only been found in these places. The fish was named after paleontologist David Dunkel, who's well known for his work on fossil fish. We know of 11 species in the genus, but this one's the biggest and the scariest. Like the rest of its family, Dunkelosaurus had a two-part armed shell made of bone. This might have made it slow, but a strong swimmer. Instead of teeth, Dunkleostis has two sets of sharp bone plates that form a structure that looks sort of like a beak. Like other placoderms, Dunkleostis might have been the first vertebrates to fertilize its eggs inside of its body, just like some sharks do today. Number 14. Anomalocaris 530 million years ago, when the Cambrian explosion happened, the oceans were full of creatures that we don't know about today. But here's one that we do know about. The name Anomalocaris, which comes from the Greek word for unusual shrimp, was one of the most dangerous predators in those ancient waters. There's Cambrian fossils of this huge extinct shrimp in the Burgess Shale in Canada, as well as in the strata in China, Greenland, Australia, and Utah. These fossils show that this huge shrimp lived all over the world at that time and was therefore very successful. The fossils in the Burgess Shale show that the largest could grow to be six feet long. That's a big shrimp. Imagine all the gumbo you could get out of just one. Scientists have learned about how Anomalocaris moved and how it hunted by studying both its body parts and complete specimens. They had stalked eyes with thousands of lenses, which gave it vision that was clear as glass. The way it swam in waves suggested that it was a fast swimmer. The monster's front legs were all covered up in sharp spikes that let it grab its prey once it caught up to it. It would have been a scary predator because it had good eyesight, moved quickly, and had sharp front arms. The mouth of Anomalocaris was made of 32 plates that stacked on top of each other. Some scientists say that this means it could easily crush prey. Number 13. Arctodus 
The short-faced bear, Arctodus simus, was part of the Pleistocene megafauna that died out 11,000 years ago on the North American continent. The first people to live on this continent must have seen it, and the thought of running into a bear that was 5 feet tall at the shoulder is horrifying. It was the perfect example of a big bad bear, but how bad was it really? There are some things about Arctodus that have become common knowledge, like that it had a short face, long limbs, and it ate more meat than grizzly bears do today. Its long legs in particular have been taken as proof that it ran down its unfortunate prey, though it wouldn't have been above running dire wolves or saber-toothed cats off their kills either. But new research suggests that this huge bear also liked to eat his vegetables, so it might be best to think of it as a huge omnivore whose diet likely included different amounts of meat depending on what was available. With these guys running around, it surely would have been a terrifying time to be alive. Number 12. Mega Piranha Mega Piranha is just as scary as the name makes it sound. Even though regular piranhas are scary enough, South American rivers used to be home to a much bigger species called Mega Piranha. Between 10 and 8 million years ago, they lived in the Ituzaingo Formation in Argentina. They were first discovered in 2009, and the researchers must have felt a chill when they found a 28-inch long piranha. They were thought to weigh about 22 pounds, which means that a whole school of these fish would have been a force to be reckoned with. It's hard to imagine what would happen if you ran into one of those much bigger monster fish. The smaller modern cousins are known to be able to rip a cow apart in minutes. The force of a mega piranha's bite is about 1,070 pounds, which is about the same as a tiger. But there's still one problem with this conclusion. The only fossils of mega piranha are pieces of jawbone and a row of teeth from a single individual. So we're making a lot of jumps about how big it might have been, and this shows that there's still a lot to learn about this Miocene threat. Number 11. The Megalodon Here's a big fish that looks like a well-known fish from today. The Megalodon is the great-great-grandfather of the Great White Shark. Its name means Big Tooth, and it lived between 23 million and 3.6 million years ago. Even though we only have pieces of this shark, we've been able to put together a very scary picture of it. This shark is thought to have been one of the biggest and most dangerous predators in the world. The largest fossils come from sharks that could have been up to 67 feet long. This animal's bite could have been as strong as 41,000 pounds per square inch, which is enough to break a car in two. This was the ultimate apex predator, because it was the only one that could catch the biggest fish in the ocean. It probably hunted whales, seals, and sea turtles, and it had a big impact on the environment. Fossil pieces have been found all over the world, so it was everywhere. Unlike the great white shark, it didn't try to attack the victim's soft underbelly. Instead, it just smashed through the victim's ribcage, broke all the bones, and crushed the heart in a devastating attack of strength and force. Number 10. The Gigantopithecus The ape species Gigantopithecus did not make it to modern times, which is something that we should all be thankful for, probably. If you ever had bad dreams about King Kong, then you don't want to meet this ape. Ralph von Kollingswald was the first person to figure out that the giant ape lived in southern China between the early and middle Pleistocene. 20 years later, more bones were found and a clearer picture of our big cousin started to take shape. Once it was thought the Gigantopithecus was a hominin, which is the branch of apes that includes chimps. Now, however, it's thought to be a cousin of the orangutan. Even though it ate plants, the huge primate looked like a gorilla and weighed about 660 pounds. It went extinct about 300,000 years ago, most likely because of changes in climate, but it also could have been because of early humans. Since then, many strange stories about the Yeti and Bigfoot have been said to be based on Gigantopithecus. This made it one of the most hotly debated topics in cryptozoology. When you remember that some people say the big ape was 12 feet tall, this shouldn't come as a surprise. Number 9. Harpagornis moray The Haas eagle, also called the Hariastis moray, is an extinct species of eagle that used to live on the South Island of New Zealand. It's thought to have been the Po'akai of Maori mythology. It was the biggest eagle known to have ever lived. It weighed 33 pounds, while the harpy eagle, today's biggest, only weighs 20 pounds. It's thought that it grew to be so big because the moa, which can't fly, weighed up to 500 pounds and was its main food source. Around 1400, Haas eagle went extinct after the Maori killed off the last moa. 
Eventually, a DNA study showed that this species is most closely related to the much smaller little eagle and the booted eagle, not the big wedge-tailed eagle as we thought before. It's thought that these eagles and the smaller eagles separated genetically between 1.8 million and 700,000 years ago. If this estimate is correct, gaining 10 to 15 times your weight in that time was a very quick process. Although I guess I see people talking about the same sort of stuff happening to their bodies over Thanksgiving online, so I guess it's not impossible. The proposed increase in the weight of the average Haast eagles over time would have been the largest and fastest increase in average weight of any vertebrate species known. This was possible because there was a lot of big prey and not many other big predators. Even though they were very heavy, the eagles could have jumped off the ground because they had strong legs and a lot of muscles for flying. Number 8. Megalania. If every myth has some truth to it, then the Megalania is most likely where stories about dragons that breathe fire started. The Komodo dragon's distant relatives would have grown to be 18 feet long and weigh more than 1,300 pounds. Megalania is the great-grandfather of the Komodo dragon. It often ate large Australian marsupials as well as giant flightless birds and huge herbivorous turtles. It would have used its venomous bite to attack strong creatures. Megalania lived in the same environment as other monitor lizards, the marsupial lion Tylacolio, crocodiles like the Quincana, and snakes like the Wanambi, with which it competed and sometimes got along. Megalania probably made a lot of noise when it walked or moved, so it probably couldn't run after a prey. Research on living monitor lizards backs this up. Like modern lizards, it probably waited for its prey to walk by before jumping out and biting them with its strong jaws and venom. Like Komodo dragons and lace monitors, Megalania's venom probably killed its victim by shocking, paralyzing, and clotting the blood, which causes a lot of blood to be lost quickly. These venoms work quickly, but the size of prey changes how well they work. Number 7. Argavantis. Argentavis magnificens is also called the giant Teratorn, which tells you a lot about how awesome and scary this huge bird was. It may have been the biggest bird that ever flew, and most of its fossils have been found in Argentina. People have said that this bird's wingspan could have been as much as 26 feet, which is crazy when you consider that the California condor has the biggest wingspan in North America at 9 feet 8 inches. And the albatross has the biggest wingspan in the world at just over 12 feet. The giant Teratorn's body probably weighed up to 180 pounds, which is a lot for a bird. About once every two years, these birds probably laid an egg that weighed about 2.2 pounds and was a little smaller than an ostrich egg. It's not surprising that scientists think this bird wasn't ever really eaten, since nothing on Earth could catch such a big bird. This means they mostly died of old age or illness. It probably took off from high places into headwinds, since it couldn't have flapped its wings for long enough or hard enough to fly like a regular bird. Number 6. Terror Birds As you might expect, terror birds are scary. Between about 62 million and 1.8 million years ago, these huge birds lived. Even though they were from South America, their only large predator from South America that's known to have crossed Panama into North America by land, as these birds were flightless. Whatever was living in North America at the time probably wasn't happy to see so many of them come over because these monsters could grow to be 10 feet tall. They had a beak that looked like an eagle's and was 18 inches long and curved into a razor-sharp hook. They were also very agile and fast, moving up to 30 miles per hour. They couldn't bite hard enough to catch big animals, so they probably stuck to easy-to-kill prey like rabbits. However, some experts disagree and say that the Smilodon and the Great White Shark are examples of top predators with weak bites. It could have used its beak as a knife to cut into the big necks of animals before killing them with its huge claws. This is all very frightening. Thankfully, they're long gone now. Number 5. Basilosaurus. Basilosaurus was an extinct type of whale. It lived between 40 and 34 million years ago, and it looked like a long snake that could grow to be more than 60 feet long. Basilosaurus had a number of features that made it stand out. Vestigial but much shorter hind limbs, which were probably not useful for moving the animal, but could have been used as a guide during mating, extremely long vertebrate like those of snakes, and a skeleton structure that showed it moved like an eel. Basilosaurus didn't have the melon organ that modern whales and dolphins use to find their way by echolocation. This means that it probably couldn't dive very deep. Basilosaurus fossils were found for the first time in Louisiana. Since then, more have been found in Egypt and Pakistan as well as the US. 
How Basilosaurus was found is an interesting story in itself. Supposedly, fossils of this animal were so common in Alabama and Louisiana in the 19th century that people used the bones to make furniture. On the other hand, a bunch of these fossils were taken to the American Philosophical Society so Dr. Richard Harlan could look at them. Harlan looked at the fossils and decided they were from reptiles. He gave the species the name Basilosaurus, which means king lizard or king reptile in Greek. Later, a paleontologist called Sir Richard Owen looked more at the samples and found that the animal was, in fact, a sea mammal. But the name stuck, and so it's called a giant lizard whale now. Number 4. Thymolacosmillus With its big front teeth, Thymolacosmillus looked a lot like a saber-toothed cat, such as the Smilodon. The main difference between these two kitties is that the saber-toothed cats were placental mammals, which means that they grew young inside their mothers while still attached to the placenta by an umbilical cord. Thymocosmillus, on the other hand, has a pouch where its young, called neonates, were born when they were still very young and stay until they're ready to go out on their own. Thylacosmillus looked like a cat with saber-toothed teeth, but it was actually related to kangaroos and the now-extinct thylacine, which is also called the Tasmanian tiger. Thylacosmillus might have used its huge teeth in the same way that saber-toothed cats did. They could have caught its prey by hiding in the bushes or by jumping onto it from above. During these sudden attacks, they might have given a deep bite to a weak spot like the neck, cutting off arteries and causing a lot of blood to flow out quickly. Even though it's not impossible that they might have hunted together, they're usually shown as a solitary hunter or even a scavenger. Number 3. Archaeotherium Archaeotherium was named for the first time in 1850, and it's still one of the best-known fossil entelodonts. And even though entelodonts are often compared to pigs, especially warthogs, most paleontologists think they're actually more closely related to mammals like hippos. They're also called terminator pigs, or hell pigs, which should probably give you an idea what kind of animals we're talking about here. They lived in North America at a time when primitive horses, camels, and rhinos roamed the land and creodonts were the only real predators that they had to worry about. Like the skulls of other entelodonts, Archaeotherium's was long and had wide cheekbones. Their jaws could open very wide, which suggests that it shut them around other animals, maybe even other members of its own species, like things in dominance contests. At up to two meters long and more than a meter tall at the shoulder, Archaeotherium would have been a powerful animal. If it lived at the same time as people, it would have been able to tear a human to shreds in about three seconds. Just so you know. Number 2. Sarcosicus. Sarcosicus imperator is an extinct crocodiliform genus and a distant cousin of modern crocodilians. It lived in what's now Africa and South America during the early Cretaceous period, from the late Hovitarian to the early Albion, 133 to 112 million years ago. It was one of the largest crocodile like reptiles in the world, growing up to 31 feet long. It's known from two species, S. Imperator from the early Albion El Raz formation of Niger, and S. Harti from the late Hauterivian of northern Brazil. Other fossils have been found in Morocco, Tunisia, Libya, and Mali. Between 1946 and 1959, French paleontologist Albert Félix de Lepin led many trips to the Sahara, where he found the oldest bones. Some of the bones that were found were the skull, spine, teeth, and scutes. In 1946, the French found a nearly complete skull in Niger. However, most of the rest of its body wasn't found until 1997 and 2000, when an expedition led by American paleontologist Paul Sereno found six more specimens, including one with about half the skeleton and most of the spine. Number 1. Meganeura Meganeura is a creature that will definitely scare people who don't like creepy crawlies. With its wings that can be up to 28 inches wide, this is the largest flying insect ever. That's much bigger than most birds today. These giant flies were related to dragonflies and damselflies, and one of them, Meganeura, may have been the biggest flying insect ever. They were predators, and since they mostly ate other insects, they were pretty much like reaper drones to the insects they lived with. In the 1880s, French paleontologist Charles Brognat found the first Meganeura fossil. He named it Large Nerved because the insect's huge wings have an amazing network of veins. In Derbyshire, England, another nearly perfect fossil was found in 1979, almost 100 years after the first one. The fossil of the first giant dragonfly is still on display at the Museum of Natural History in Paris. Many people think of it as the first giant dragonfly. 
Okay, so which of these had you hiding under your bed covers? If you were in charge of Jurassic Park, which one of these animals would you put in a dangerously unsafe enclosure that would certainly lead to it breaking out about 30 minutes into the movie? Let us know in the comments below. Also, check out our other cool stuff showing up on screen right now.